if you have the average size shape placement of any trait, it's going to be above average attractiveness, right? Why would that be the case? Well, there are a few possibilities. One possibility is that people with more average traits are somehow healthier in their development. Because we see this across cultures. You could say, oh, it's a cultural thing, but it's, but it's difficult because when we look in other cultures, we see the same effect. Yeah, yeah, and in saying. fact, there are cultures that have no exposure or no significant exposure to Western media, such as the Ache, where they actually have a stronger preference for averageness, right? So you can't say, oh, it's because our celebrities have average looking faces. It's like, ah, not really, because these people don't have Maybe celebrities not. in the same sense. Sure. And they also are picking the average faces. So it could be that it signals some kind of underlying health. Right? So yeah. when we're selecting mates, there does seem to be a bias across cultures for selecting traits that are associated with good health. This could be because these people have more robust genes, right? That you want to, you want your children to have healthy genes, let's okay, say. Okay. Could be that. Mm. But it could also be putting the cart before the horse, right? It could be sexual selection preferred these traits and that's how they became the averages, right? So maybe the average nose is the average nose because it looks good. And so every all selection is kind of pressing towards the average on each trait as a result. So it could be a cart before the horse thing. Sure. And there, there, you know, there are a couple other ideas. One idea from the kind of non-evolutionary literature, just so I, just so I make sure, because I'm an evolutionary scientist, so I'm, I tend to, uh, I tend to communicate in their terms. But there is an idea from the non-evolutionary literature that's not necessarily incompatible, but it's just that these faces are easier to process, right? If it's an average face, maybe it's it's just a smoother processing. You know, it's not new, it's not weird, it's not strange because it's so normal, right. your brain just picks it up immediately and as a result, they become more attractive. And then on the symmetry thing, it's just, just because this is actually quite quick, people who develop more healthily, right, with less environmental insults, such as, you know, injuries, right? Like I have a very asymmetrical face because I used to box, so I, I you know, I broke That's my nose. And it, stuff, yeah, yeah uh -huh. so, I've, 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 so my face is less symmetrical. What does that tell mates? It tells mates that for, if, I'm, if it's between me and, you know, pretty boy who has like, super symmetrical yes. face. Yeah, exactly. It's like, well, how come he was able to get out unscathed from life, right? That's a True. good signal, right? It's a good signal of something. It, it, somehow this guy's avoided damage. That's something that's considered, that's something that's considered positive. So symmetry, it could be avoiding insults, could also be health. a genetic thing. Well, yeah. yeah, it could also be a health thing. Yeah. And it could go back to the processing thing again. It could just be like, oh, it's easier to, if a face is symmetrical, you can download it easier. That's actually what, that was the original kind of debunking of the averaging hypothesis was someone said, hang on, if you, because we already knew about symmetry, they were like, hang on, if you superimpose tons of faces, each face is going to get more symmetrical because each individual asymmetrical item is going to be controlled for by the other faces. And so some people were like, oh, averageness isn't attractive. It's just more, we're just replicating the symmetry effect. Um, but then later it, it turns out the averageness actually is attractive. They just had to do more robust studies to control for that. I would also just make a quick note while, while we're going down all this literature. I don't, I don't sure. want to, I don't want to send everyone in front of the mirror um, to be like, Oh my God, am I symmetrical? Am I? <laughs> there are, you know, there are, you know, bona fide celebrities who are considered very attractive, who actually have very, like a, a good example of this is um, Tom Cruise, right? I mean, I mean, Tom Cruise isn't, isn't this anymore, but um, he, he was used, a heartthrob, but he used day. to be, yeah, he used to be considered very, very, very attractive. Oh. And he is extremely asymmetrical. If you actually measure the symmetry of his face, it, it, it's, it's quite off. This is all just to say that it's like, yes, these things help, but the effect size isn't that big, right? There's actually more that goes into attractiveness and yeah. you can get away with being asymmetrical and good looking. You can get away with being very non-average and good looking. We all, we all can think of models and celebrities who are attractive, but they have peculiar traits that are very outside the average. So I don't want anyone at home to think that they're just completely doomed because they're asymmetrical or not average looking. Uh, it's, it's very possible to be a good looking person with neither of those traits. Those are just traits that we see consistently replicated across cultures as attractive.